No question that Adelaide is the most livable city. How has the last couple of weeks been? The weather's been sensational. And I don't know about you, but bags under my eyes isn't from necessarily work. It's from all the social events, the, the fringe and, the, of course, the clips on the weekend. That was amazing. Um, I'm not sure who went to the KISS concert, but I am so upset that I didn't go. I had Facebook messages and um, videos sent to me, and I'm going, I should have been there. Anyway, it's done. Uh, and just a fantastic place to live, uh, a happening city. So for those of you watching this that are not in Adelaide, get your butts down here and start buying some property. Now to that end, we've got Kate Graves, the Senior Manager of CBRE, and she joins us in the studio. Hello, Anthony. Welcome, Kate. <laughs> Thank you. Now, Kate, just um, before we get underway, for those listening, CBR CBRE um, is what sort of organisation? and how big is it and your part, how do you fit into it? Okay, CBRE is actually an international um, uh, commercial property group. Uh, we look after, we do agency, particularly in commercial properties, but we have very large valuation arms for both commercial and residential. Uh, we do a whole range of sustainability um, for the commercial properties and uh, we have a large asset and facilities management team. So we're a very diverse organisation and we get to look at a lot of different facts and figures across, uh, across Adelaide. So um, I do both residential, uh, commercial, industrial and retail um, analysis for the Adelaide market. So you're a numbers person? I'm a numbers person. <laughs> All right, and today we're going to have a few numbers thrown around, mm -hmm. but before we get uh, into that, just uh, explain to me, McGoran Hogg, you purchased that business? Yes, we, we acquired that business a couple of years ago, um, and that became part of our residential valuations arm. We would have um, one of the largest teams of residential valuers on the ground in Adelaide. So we are certainly seeing a lot of evidence about what's coming through the market and, and assessing and, and volumes in terms of um, valuations is improving. So we, um, we're certainly seeing a lot of activity in, in that end for, within our business. Right, so shortly, we, um, shortly we'll be talking to Cameron Kusher from RP Data. Yep. Now, I know that you use a couple of different sources of data. So just explain in your world, where do you get information from? Is it from real estate agents? and from um, data or from people on the street, how does it all work in terms of your valuations? So in terms of valuations, we, RP data would generally be the main source of data. Uh, there's a couple of people that actually aggregate this information to be able to give us trends, and there are two main ones that we would use, which is RP data, which we'll be speaking to Cameron later, but um, also Residex. And both of them use different methodologies as to how to come up with these numbers. So if you hear a number, it could be just that it's a different number from what you've heard previously. It could be just that they're different from Residex versus uh, RP data. So you just need to make sure you're comparing the same source data. Source data. So just explain to us because uh, it comes up all the time. Um, you know, one week there'll be in the paper or online uh, a number, the median price for South Australian property or Adelaide property, and then the next week, you know, it's a completely different number. Mm -hmm. So just explain from a from your point of view, how how can that be? Well, it d generally depends on what they do with the data. So they might exclude certain properties um, from, from that analysis. And it's how they then, um, without getting too technical, how they aggregate that data and make it and, and weight it so that then it can get a median price. And they use different methodologies to get to that point. So um, I actually had a look at both of these this morning and, and Residex is saying 385500 um, is the median house price, whereas RP data was uh, three ninety five. So that's right. Yes. Exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> so you know there there is a, a difference, but the trend generally is the same. It might be within a couple of a couple of points of percentage, but it's it's generally the trend is generally the same within RP data and RP and uh, Residex. Now there's this term that uh, RP data uses called risk mark. Yes. What is that? Uh, that is a, a tool that they actually use to, um, to do valuations as well. So you can actually use a whole range of interactive tools on their website as a valuer. So you can actually pull data up and do radius searches and that sort of thing. So I've, um, certainly the residential valuations arm use that quite extensively. Now, there was no interest rate rise this week. Yes. Um, did you agree or disagree with that? Um, look. Oh, sorry, drop. Not right. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it didn't. It stayed the same, and yeah. I think I think that's a reasonably unsurprising result. Um, it depends on who you listen to and who you read. There was certainly some analysts out in the market saying that they thought there might be a 
a case for a, a decrease. A lot of it is based around mining investment and whether that's peaked or not. Um, and the RPD and the Reserve Bank believe that there's still some legs in that and that we'll start to see residential construction and the like fill the gap of, of GDP um, after mining has started to come into production phase, meaning it doesn't contribute as much to GDP. So um, I think it's an unsurprising result and we're at a very low cash rate historically. Mm. Um, and you know, the, the Reserve Bank just want to wait and see and, and let the current cash rate cuts from late last year flow through the market. Sometimes it can take three to, three to six months for those um, to flow fully through the market. Now, Kate, in a moment, the three of us will have a chat to camera, which that's on residential. Yes. But I have a number of commercial properties. Yes. And I actually have no exposure to commercial law, which is odd because they think real estate agent is real estate agent, but we're purely residential. What is happening on commercial? The commercial property market is um, relatively stable. We had very serious corrections through the GFC and that happened pretty very quickly. Very serious corrections. Very serious what corrections. What, what does that actually mean <laughs> in terms? So that means um, that prices fell quite dramatically. Um, some, in some cases, you know, 20, 30 per cent, depending on the, the sector. Overnight. Yes, very much so. Um, and, and so therefore, we've seen that kind of, we, we saw a little bit of that coming back. So we've started to see some growth. Um, and it's probably only now that we're starting to get towards pre-GFC levels. Um, so it's taken a long time to recover. Sales volumes are, are still relatively low when you compare it to um, pre-GFC uh, volumes, but then you might also say that they might have been somewhat extraordinary. So we're probably returning to what we may class in a commercial market as a normal market. It's um, you know relatively fat, it does take a little while to sell, um, and we are starting to see investment transactions, meaning that people are purchasing a property that has a tenant that's sitting that's paying rent. Yep. Uh, okay. We actually saw a lot in, say, in the industrial market where it was what we'd call a vacant possession. So the building wasn't occupied when it mm -hmm. was sold and it was being bought by owner occupiers. Um, and so therefore owner occupiers were a very strong purchaser of property. Um, we've started to see um, investors becoming a bit more active in the last sort of six months. And you know those signs are showing that we hopefully we'll see a bit more investment activity in, in the commercial markets over the next six months. Kate, residentially there's been a massive change since late October or October, November, mm. December, January, February have all been amazing. Yep. Um, is it the same in commercial? Uh, not so much. Um, the volumes are reasonably consistent mm -hmm. uh, across across quarters, um, and we haven't seen a serious spike in in activity in that period. Um, but we're hoping we're certainly seeing a deal pipeline come through, and there's been a lot of deals that were negotiated late last year that might fall through into this year. Um, settlements on commercial properties uh, tend to be a bit longer than say in residential, so it might take a while for that evidence to come through the market. Thanks, Kate. We'll, no we'll be back in a minute with a bit more information. Uh, in the meantime, let's go and look at the sole properties, those going, going, gone properties.